So there's definitely gonna be a, like a quality difference in our photos just because Ramsey's taking two frames, right? And I'm cropping one frame. Not only is his glass nicer, but he's getting double the real estate double space. The, an important thing to think about too is yours was $10. Mine was $5 from a thrift store. Yours was five bucks? Yeah. Your camera? No. <laughs> I'm like, what the? You're not hurting. Does it sound okay? Okay, it's bouncing. Welcome back to another Sunday Strolls. I've been uh, looking for a panoramic camera because every time Ramsey shoots on his Hasselblad, it's so dope, but I don't have the money for that. I started searching around on YouTube and I found a really cheap, it's essentially like a, a point and shoot disposable camera, but panoramic. So today I'm shooting on the Ansco Pix Panorama. The interesting thing is it is a cropped 35 millimeter frame. So the cool thing is I can take this out and this just turns into a point and shoot, you know, regular aspect ratio. This is the panoramic I'm shooting on and I'm going to shoot on Kodak 400 Ultramax. Freezing. It is so cold. There we go. Welcome back to Sunday Strolls. Today we're bringing back some themes and we're going to try and capture things that are ugly kind of in the same way like a pug is ugly and cute at the same time i think that's the energy we're going for with these photos so eli's shooting on his panoramic camera so i had to flex on him and let him know what a real pano is supposed to look like i mean that's the size you want i think bigger is better in this scenario we're going to be on the 45 mil it's just fun to go wide with it you know kind of see what these two you know panoramic cameras look like side by side try and shoot very similar subjects and then see what they look like at the end i'm going to be shooting on uh, the portra just to the tip let's sneak the little stop sign in the in the shot with this guy with this big like the wayne manor in the background at a 125th at an f8 kind of metering for these trees in the foreground when I was pointing it up at the sky, it was getting, it was telling me a reading that would have just underexposed the whole bottom half of my frame here. Here we go, three, two, one. That sound is nice. Some money moving through the video. So I don't know what the shutter speed is on this. Um, or the f-stop. Or the f-stop. I bet, dude, I bet it's somewhere in like a, like a hundredth of a second in like an f8. That's my bet. Yeah, so everything's gonna work. Everything's gonna look good. So where was the stop sign in your photo? I kind of put it in the left. In the left? What am I saying? The, the right. right. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> so I'm liking, there's the little bushes going there, and then I like the little orange red dots going on the bush. I love that. It's kind of ugly, right? So we're at F4 to 125. Nice. All right, let me, let me, let me pop it. Tidy events. Three, two, one. This tree, you can kind of see this. All of the leaves have fallen. Well, not all, but the majority of leaves have fallen and, and it's still pretty ugly. So I'm gonna capture this. Three, two, one. There we go. What were your settings? What did you shoot at? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do an F8, 250th. Three, two, one. Yeah, I shot an FU, FU out of 10 for 10 bucks. <laughs> Bro, you see that car down there? You know we can't help ourselves, we gotta go get it. Oh, look at that Range Rover. That's kind of chill. All right, dude, let's get these two. Cause I like the Volvo and the Range Rover. All right, dude, I wanted a little more in focus. We went an F8, out of 63. Ooh, I love that, dude. Hopefully that Did framing's right. Did they fit? I gotta scoot back a little bit. Three, two, one. Dude, I forget how much fun it is to shoot with this camera, man. Man, you come from the side and you get Salt Lake going in the background. I want this car, but then I want the poles going in the back, kind of leading lines all the way down, back down to the valley. They were F8 at the 60. Three, two. Was that the right framing? I'm not sure. Eight, two, one. Okay, dude, we're liking a little bit of the wispy tree in the foreground. Some of the uh, the bush on the house there. And F8, I'm gonna go down to like a, a 125th probably. Yeah, three, two. Oh, 
I'm gonna wait for the wind, I think. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Okay, I'm gonna shoot these three garbage cans. It's kind of ugly and boring. Three, two, one. Let daddy show you how it's done, bro. We're at an F8 at a 125th. Three, two, one. I like that one. All right, dude. I'm liking this tree. I love that. Guy? My goodness, probably just a, a 125th at an F8. There you go, three, two, one. You got the sun peeking through the gnarly clouds and just the bare naked trees there. Three, two. Okay, so my idea, I'm gonna have you walk across the crosswalk. Okay, you're gonna be in the middle, pointing down. Just Abbey Road style? Exactly. You're good. Bang! That's gonna be sick. Am I getting my rendition of it? If you want. Let's do it. Alright, bro. And this is kind of an ugly house. Look at that. That's horrible. Can you imagine this being your house? That's it's awful. Five, six, eight split at a 250th. Bring it up, this, this epic house. Here we go, three, two, one. I think that's actually gonna be a good shot. Let me, I need one. Three, two, one. Let's go up and over here. All right. We came across the green van. 60th at, a, at an F4. Three, I love that. I'm gonna take one. Did you get the whole wheels in it? Part crack? of them, yeah. At least I think so. We're always using the widest lens, but I really love. Yeah, that's sweet. That guy way down there. Let's get that. A 125th F8 11 split. Looks like they either ran out of money mid-project or something. We're gonna get a shot of that. Five, six, eight, split. Three, two, one. Dude, like imagine it. hitting this rail on a ski, some skis or something. That's snowmobile. what I was thinking, dude. Woo, woo. Three, two, one. Yeah, I like this opening with some trees popping out. It is kind of scary. We should have done our, done our spooky strolls here. I know. Three, two, one. Five, six, eight, split at a 125th. Three, two, one. Hey, what an eerie little feel. Dude, that's fire. Are you kidding me? I'm glad I came up here. Okay, let's see how this looks. I'm gonna not get the gate in it. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Three, two, one. Here we go, three, two, one. Be a dope building to own. Yeah, let's go get these cones. These are pretty heavy. One more to finish off the roll, dude. Five, six, and a 125th. Three, two, one. I kept it tighter than you, I think.
we kind of wanted to switch this one up and reflect on the photos a little bit more in, in depth and kind of show the comparison that we were hoping to achieve. Both of these cameras are panoramic cameras, but they accomplish it differently. The Hasselblad, the negative is actually much bigger and it's a true panoramic and taking up more space on the, on the film strip versus your panoramic camera. It's the same 35 millimeter length, but it's just crop the top and bottom a little bit. Clearly there's a difference, but we want to see how noticeable it is and if it's really worth one camera being $10 and one being $5,000. So I think the, the photo that was most surprising for me, I didn't see too much of a difference, was it was that photo with the house and it had the ivy growing on it and you had the big long like a willowy tree. I think the biggest difference in the center of the point and shoot my camera, the image is pretty clear. It starts to fall off towards the corners and that's really what I think that one of the bigger differences in the camera just in all of my photos. That clarity is lost and depending on what your output is that can determine you know whether or not you think it's worth it but for me it's not that big of a deal that my photos fall off towards the edge. Generally my subject is the thing I want to you know keep in the middle of my frame. That's really I would say one of the bigger differences is that it just falls off towards the edges. When you both zoom in like a hundred times I mean you can definitely see like there's a lot more grain there and it's more noticeable and mine's a little sharper and you know the grain's a little more fine but when your output is Instagram I mean it, it's compressing the hell out of your photo anyways. With that photo I didn't really feel like I didn't notice anything that jumped out at me and said whoa this is a picture taken with a $10 camera and this one's taken with a five thousand dollar camera. The next photo that we kind of wanted to look at was this image just looking down this road down the hill you can see kind of a forerunner off in the distance and then further off in the distance is State Street. Yeah, it's the biggest it is. one of the main roads in downtown Salt Lake. That was a clear comparison that X-Pan is way better, way nicer. Quality is just a hundred times better than my Pix panorama. Yeah, you zoom in on that one, especially like if you zoom in on the, the Forerunner, I mean the grain is so noticeable in your photo. You can definitely see there's a difference between in quality and sharpness on that lens, and like it should. I mean this is a this is kind of a ridiculous comparison, but it's just like we're trying to see can you shoot pano and still have decent results for, you know, super cheap. I just wanted to take panoramic photos because of the X-Pan. Like it was like, I love the way this looks. I'm glad we're doing this comparison because even though it, they're not even close, just the aspect ratio, everything has been, it was a blast to shoot. They're so much fun to shoot because you get to compose the image right from the beginning with that format in mind versus just getting a regular 35 millimeter camera and having to crop it after the fact. When you look through that viewfinder, that's what it is. The one's clearly gonna be a little nicer quality, but like they're both gonna give you, I think, the same satisfaction and joy of being able to compose in like a more cinematic or cool aspect ratio. Let us know if you guys think it's worth the $5,000 price tag versus a $10 price tag. Thanks for watching guys, and thanks to everyone that's been watching. Subscribe to follow along, like this video, 